can we just get your take on on this latest uh, information of course all of this is as James Packer continues to dominate the headlines I guess no big surprises here. Yesterday the questions were around how James Packer was going to fund some of his expansion plans for that six-star hotel in Perth as well as uh, the Barangaroo project in conjunction with Len Lee. So I guess we've had the answer there in terms of funding that we will see this hybrid issue going towards, um, towards uh, helping to fund some of the expansion plans for Crown. Of course the key to Barangaroo is still that casino license and that's really what uh, it's lacking at the moment. So the what market's going to be watching are the progress of that. But some of these hybrid issues have been quite popular with investors as they shy away from risk and enter into uh, some of those investments that have more fixed interest characteristics. I'll have to have a look at the breakdown to see whether they are on attractive uh, market terms. But altogether, some of that uh, funding question, I guess, removed from Crown. And where does that leave this echo entertainment bid, Julia? And that's a big question, whether there's enough money in the coffers for all that entertain Echo Entertainment bid. And I guess the, the, the attractiveness of Echo comes from its casino license, in particular that Sydney license, which is the only casino license uh, in Sydney. And I guess if uh, Packer m makes its way around and is able to get a casino license elsewhere, the, the, the Echo bid is less likely. Otherwise, perhaps a joint venture uh, with Echo for that casino in Barangaroo. So a few options on the table. The market... Uh, uh, we'll be watching the size of this hybrid to see how much the war chest will be filled up and whether there is enough money left over for a potential echo bin. Thanks, Julia. We do appreciate your analysis on that. Sorry to put you on the spot there, but we appreciate it. Now, in terms of the market today, we're looking at losses at the open. No surprise there after that disappointment surrounding the ECB overnight. But where do you see us trading going forward? It's been a massive disappointment overnight, especially after Draghi's speech last mm. week, which the markets are calling the Believe speech. And I've just got a 30-day chart of the Australian market up, and you can see just the impact that that speech has had on the Australian market, where we've managed a rise of about 150 points uh, since Mario Draghi's speech. Of course, last night, some of that steam came out because we didn't see any clear actions by the ECB. It seemed like last week's speech was just verbal interaction in the marketplace, and we saw Spanish bond yields up by almost um, 60 basis points. That's the single largest move in history. We saw Swiss, Dutch, uh, Dutch bonds uh, at new record lows in terms of yields. We saw the Germany stock market down by 2.2% and Italy's stock market down by a massive 4.6%. In comparison though, the US wasn't as bad. It was only down by 0.7%. So that should buffer some of the losses on the Australian market today. Yesterday, what we saw on the Aussie market was a bit of a switch from the banks into resources. But I don't think we're going to see much follow through today. Given the fall that we have seen in commodity mm. prices, we've seen gold down by 0.9% and copper down by 2.2% with oil prices down by 1.8%. So once again, it does look like it is going to be the materials, the energy sectors, which lead the losses on the Aussie market. Yeah, absolutely. And we are expecting some numbers out today from ResMed. They've got some Q4 figures expected. We have seen some numbers out from ResMed and of course it's, uh, it, it trades in New York as well. And for the quarter we've actually seen profit up by 31% and we've seen revenue up by 9%. In fact, ResMed coming out with a record profit as well as revenue result for the quarter. So a very strong result there. It's America's business uh, did provide most of the growth, growth of about 13% there compared to the rest of the world, which sh uh, saw growth of about 3%. But altogether, if we have a look at the shares, they've been doing well in the past year, up by 12%. But after hours in uh, New York, we did...